Hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, The History of Us. I am so happy that you decided to join me today. We will be continuing to learn about the women who built the United States of America and who helped during the Revolutionary War. Today, we will be talking about Elizabeth Freeman. She was a slave who helped pave the pathway for the abolishment of slavery in the state of Massachusetts. Elizabeth was born into slavery in New York in either 1742 or 1744. This date is still debated. Elizabeth's parents were first-generation slaves. She grew up in the household of Peter Hodgeboom with her younger sister, Lizzie. When Elizabeth's owner's daughter married a man by the name of Ashton, Elizabeth and Lizzie were given to them as a gift. Elizabeth had a daughter while she was on Ashley's estate. However, the father is unknown. Her daughter is believed to be named Betty. What some of you may not know is that after 40 years of bondage, Elizabeth eventually sought her freedom from her master in court. There are many reasons why some people believe that she may have sought her freedom. And all these stories are probably not true. There's probably only one. So, one of the possible stories is that after 40 years of bondage, Elizabeth was inspired to seek her freedom when Mrs. Ashley once attempted to hit Elizabeth's sister or possibly her daughter with a heated shovel. However, Elizabeth took the hit instead. She showcased the wound on her arm afterwards to show her mistreatment. This mistreatment is what some believe inspired her to seek her freedom. However, others believe that Elizabeth was inspired by hearing a reading of the Declaration of Independence. Others believe that Colonel Ashley may have inspired Elizabeth. He was a judge in the Berkshire Court of Common Pleas. In 1773, he participated in the creation of the Sheffield Declaration, which essentially said that all people were equal and had a right to their property, pursuit of happiness, and liberty. Elizabeth would have heard these ideas from being around her master, although they wouldn't have been directly communicated to her. Since Elizabeth may have discovered that she was entitled to pursuit of happiness and liberty, she would have realized that she shouldn't have been a slave. This is what some people believe she heard from Colin Ashley, and this is what they believe inspired her to seek her freedom. Whatever the reason, Elizabeth teamed up with a slave named Brom, who was also a slave on Ashley's estate, and they decided to legally fight for their freedom in court. Elizabeth and Brom teamed up with a lawyer named Theodore Cedric Sr., who also disapproved of slavery. They were going to fight for their freedom in court. They argued that slavery wasn't lawful, so Brom and Elizabeth needed to be freed. At first, they received an order for Ashley to release Brom and Elizabeth. However, Ashley refused to do so, so the case was brought up again. Their case, Brom and Bett v. J. Ashley Squire, was heard on August 21, 1781. On August 22, 1781, a court in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, found that Freeman and Brom should be freed as slavery was unconstitutional. The Ashleys had to pay Elizabeth and Brom each 30 shillings and pay Freeman's salary for the year she had worked for them, which was about a total of 10. The court costs were also covered. The Ashleys were going to appeal, but eventually they didn't. Elizabeth's case is often said to be the first case in which an African-American woman or even any African-American slave, received her freedom via the court system in the state of Massachusetts. In addition, Elizabeth's case was probably part of the inspiration for a group of three cases like hers, which combined were called the Quack Walker case. Historians believe that this case was significant in getting the Supreme Court of Massachusetts to outlaw slavery, as it eventually did. Overall, Elizabeth's case set the course for the abolishment of slavery in Massachusetts. After a case, Elizabeth repeatedly refused her former owner, Ashley's offer for her to return to his plantation as a paid servant. She actually went to work for Sedgwick as a paid servant. She adopted the name Freeman after she was freed and ended up working for Sedgwick for the rest of her life. She was also a nurse and a midwife. She may have even defended Sedgwick's house from rebels during Shays' Rebellion after the Revolutionary War in 1787. After 20 years, Elizabeth bought her and her children a house. However, Elizabeth never learned to read or write. After her death in 1829, she was buried with the rest of the Cedric family. She was the only person buried there who wasn't actually part of their family. That is the end of my information on Elizabeth Freeman. Thank you so much for watching today as I shared the story of one of my favorite women from the Revolutionary War era. Here are the sources that I used in my research. If you have any comments, suggestions, or anything else you would like to say, 
you can totally email me at abby at historyofus at gmail.com. Again, thank you so much for watching and please tune in in two weeks for another video. Have a great day. Thank you.